Choosing the right cabin or stateroom as Viking calls it, is critical to getting the most out of your cruising experience. Depending upon your budget and preferences, the right stateroom is not the same for everyone. In this video, I'm gonna highlight the key differences between Viking Ocean Cruises staterooms. Then at the end, I'll share details and a full walkthrough video of the stateroom that we selected and why this is the stateroom we plan to select for every Viking Ocean Cruise going forward. Before I get started, two key points I would like to make. Number one, every Viking Ocean cruise ship is identical, so this is gonna to apply to all of the Viking Ocean cruise ships. Number two, there's no bad room, and I'm not just saying that. It may be one thing that Viking does better than any other cruise line, is ensure that no matter what room you're in, you're gonna have a great experience. So let's jump into the differences. Viking Ocean Cruises has six staterooms to choose from. They call them their Veranda, their Deluxe Veranda, their Penthouse Veranda, their Penthouse Junior Suite, the Explorer Suite, and they do have one Owner Suite. So what's the difference between these and which room is right for you? Let's look at the first two classes of staterooms first, the Veranda and the Deluxe Veranda. So I've broken down the differences here and I'll go through each one. First thing you'll see with the veranda and the deluxe veranda is the room size is identical. Down here I have an image of what that room looks like. The room is identical in size, layout, and everything else. So there is no difference in the room between the veranda and the deluxe veranda. One difference is gonna be the location on the ship. Later on in the video I'll show you how you can see wherever one of these rooms are located on the ship and what your options are. But what are the other differences? So first thing you'll see here is I have stateroom access. So you can board the ship at 11 a.m. However, when you gain access to your stateroom is gonna vary depending upon the class of stateroom. You can see here the veranda opens up at 3 p.m. whereas the deluxe veranda opens up at 2 p.m. So you get a little earlier access with the deluxe, deluxe veranda. When we boarded our Viking Ocean cruise, I will say that they made an announcement at about 12.30, 1 o'clock that day, that all of the staterooms were available. So there's a chance you could get into your stateroom earlier than what this says. The other difference is gonna be around your excursions. So Viking does a great job of curating um, a tremendous list of excursions at each port. They will include one, in, one excursion is included in the price of your cruise at each port. Then, there's gonna, then they're gonna have a variety of options that you can buy up to and pay extra for these excursions. You can see with the veranda, you can book these excursions 60 days before your departure. Whereas with the deluxe veranda, you gain earlier access and you can book them 67 days before departure. Why is that important? Well, because the earlier you can book your excursions, your restaurants, your spa appointments, the less chance they are to fill up so you can get the excursion you want at the time that you want. The next difference, as you can see, is gonna be in the restaurants. You can see with the veranda, there are no reservations uh, that you have access to before you board the ship. So you have to board the ship, then make your reservations for what's available. With the deluxe veranda, they actually give you one reservation at each of the specialty dining um, restaurants. And you can book those up to 60 days before your departure. With the spa, again on the veranda, there's no reservations available before boarding, whereas with the deluxe veranda, 60 days before your departure, you can book your spa appointments for the available time. Now in terms of price, I just wanted to show you kind of what the difference might be between these two. And I selected the cheapest price right now uh, for any Viking cruise. But you can see the difference is a little bit. It's, it's a couple hundred dollars for their cheapest cruise, which is an eight day cruise. Um, uh, and that's per person and based on double occupancy. So obviously the price for that stateroom is gonna double um, depending upon what I have listed here. So you can see there's a little bit of an upcharge for the deluxe veranda. And then you can see the location of the uh, staterooms. For the veranda, it's only on deck three. So Viking Ocean Cruises staterooms are on decks three through eight. And with the deluxe veranda, you can see those actually vary. They're available on every floor and in different locations. Let's now look at the next 
two classes of staterooms, which is class three and four, which is gonna be your penthouse veranda and your penthouse junior suite. And here you can see the room size is gonna be different between these two. So the penthouse veranda comes in at 338 square feet. I further broke this down based on how large the cabin is and how large the balcony is. So those two square footages add up to the total room size. So you can see the cabin is 269 square feet. The balcony is 69 square feet. Then when you compare that to the penthouse junior suite, you'll see that it's 405 square feet overall. And that breaks down with 320 of those feet being with the cabin and the balcony being 85 square feet. Um, the bathroom I included here, it's actually included in the overall size of the cabin and the total square foot. But I did think it was important to note that the bathroom for the penthouse veranda is 34 square feet, whereas for the penthouse junior suite, it is 50 square feet. So you may not think that 15, 16 feet makes a difference, but it actually does add quite a bit of space when you're with the bathroom. It actually gives you a double sink instead of just a single sink. You can also see your access to your stateroom is gonna be different. So penthouse veranda, you gain access at 1 p.m. Whereas with the penthouse junior suite, you have the earliest stateroom access of any of the rooms. You're gonna gain access to that at 11 a.m. With excursions, you can book your penthouse veranda 77 days before departure. And with the junior suite, you have 87 days before departure. At the restaurants, you're gonna be able to book your restaurant reservation 70 days before departure. And with the junior suite, it's 80 days before departure. And another key difference here is that with the veranda, the penthouse veranda, you get two reservations to each of the specialty dining restaurants. Whereas the penthouse junior suite, you actually get three reservations at each one of the specialty dining restaurants. The spa, you can book out 70 days before your departure on the penthouse veranda. And in the penthouse junior suite, you can book it 80 days out. And then you can see that there is um, a larger price difference here than the previous two classes of cabins we looked at. Uh, for the cheapest cruise right now on Viking, the difference is roughly going to be about $700 per person or $1,400 per room for their cheapest cruise. And then when you look at the location on the cruise ship, they're going to have various locations on the cruise ship, but the penthouse veranda is uh, within decks four through six. Whereas the Penthouse Junior Suite, you're going to have the top decks available, and that's going to be decks six through eight. And all of the um, Penthouse Junior Suites are kind of forward of center on the ship, which actually gives you great access to some of the best areas like the Explorer's Lounge and Mamson's and the Sports Deck, which is some of the areas that we actually spent the most amount of time at. Uh, some of the bonus items with the Penthouse Veranda that aren't included in the first two classes of cabins that I mentioned, you do get clothes pressing and you do get a mini bar that is stocked once a day and you have alcohol and sodas uh, within that mini bar. And with a penthouse junior suite, uh, I did note you do get double sinks in the bathroom. Uh, that's nice to us, that's kind of important to us. Uh, you do get a much bigger closet. You get a second TV it includes laundry, so they'll do all of your laundry for free, or it's included in the price. And then you also get a large seating area with a divider. So with those first four classes of cabins, I wanted to show you an image here of their layout. So the veranda and the deluxe veranda were those first two classes that we spoke about. And then this is the penthouse veranda, which is class three of their stateroom choices. You can see that the difference between the, the first and second class and the third class is really the width of the room. And that's obviously going to change the layout in addition to all the other differences I mentioned. And then I further um, wanted to compare the difference between the penthouse veranda um, based on the layout and the penthouse junior suite. So this is a great opportunity. If you want to take a screenshot, um, feel free to do that. And that will give you the difference between the four classes of uh, staterooms. But down here at the Penthouse Veranda and the Penthouse Junior Suite, uh, Penthouse Junior Suite being about 70 square feet bigger, you're gonna have a bigger balcony. And what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna allow this chair with the makeup desk is actually gonna move in front of the bed that you can see down here. 
And then that's gonna open up this living area because it's wider on the Penthouse Junior Suite. You're gonna get an additional chair um, there to sit at, so you have a little additional seating area as well. Let's look at the last two classes of cabin, which are called the Explorer Suite and the Owner Suite. And I have the layouts down here at the bottom. You can see with the Explorer Suite, the room size is gonna vary. So 757 to over 1100 square feet. So they actually do have two options with the Explorer Suite, whether you want the aft layout or you want the suite forward, the Explorer Suite forward. Um, so depending upon which one you choose, you're gonna have a different square footage and a different layout. Um, and then you can see the owner suite is over 1400 square feet. So there's only one of these, the owner suite on the cruise ship, and you can see the layout down here at the bottom. So what's the difference? Again, you're gonna get the earliest stateroom access, uh, the same as the Penthouse Junior Suite. It's gonna be 11 a.m. On the Explore Suite, you gain access to your excursions 97 days before departure. And the Owner Suite, you get 107 days before departure. So with the Owner Suite, you're gonna get first pick of everything. With the Explorer Suite, there's only one person in front of you, and then the other people with the, uh, that also book the Explorer Suite that may be booking up any type of reservations. So you're likely gonna get whatever you want, excursion, restaurant, and spa appointment-wise in terms of times. You can see on the restaurants, the Explorer Suite does give you three reservations at each of the specialty dining restaurants. And the Owner Suite, you get four reservations at each of the specialty dining restaurants. The spa opens up 90 days before for booking with the Explorer Suite, whereas with the Owner Suite, you have 100 days before. You can see the prices for these two classes of cabin, cabins uh, or staterooms. It's much higher than the previous four classes that I had mentioned. So the cheapest is gonna be $5,000 per person right now for the Explorer Suite. Um, so you're gonna to have to double that because it's based on double occupancy. And you can see with the owner suite, um, it's $8,000. So these are significantly um, higher than the other four classes. The location for the Explorer Suite is gonna be on decks three through six, again, aft or forward. And the owner suite is gonna be on deck seven. It's actually right beside the Explorer's Lounge and Mamson's. Uh, and then the bonus items on the Explorer Suite that you don't get with uh, the other four classes, so you're going to have a full living room and dining area, um, and there's going to be a different layout depending upon which one you choose. With the owner suite, there's a ton of bonuses. So, so you have an ocean view dry sauna. Um, you have a boardroom that seats 12 people in case you want to have a business meeting while you're there, I guess. Um, there's a separate dining area, a separate living room. You have a private library, and you have many more. I'll open these up and you can take a screenshot and kind of compare the difference between the veranda or the first four classes of staterooms here. So if you want to take a screenshot of that, feel free. And then down here, I'll go ahead and open up the Explorer Suite and the Owner Suite. So you can also take a screenshot of those so you have all the differences. And here are the room layouts. If you want to get a second look or if you want to take a screenshot of that, Again, these are the first two classes of cabins, the veranda and deluxe veranda, compared to the penthouse veranda. Again, the penthouse veranda down here, so you can compare it to the penthouse junior suite. And then down here, at the, all the way down at the bottom, we have the explorer suites and the owner suite and the layouts of those. So once you've chose the stateroom that's best for you, there's one other thing to know, and that's how do you pick the location of the stateroom? So here I'm just on one of Viking Ocean Cruises uh, this is their Iberian Explorer. Um, but if we scroll down, you'll see when, once you go through dates and look at dates, you'll see all the different stateroom options here. A couple things to note. You'll see on here where you have your veranda. There's a V1, V2. And then deluxe veranda, you have um, DV1, 2, 3. So what these different classes of staterooms within the class of stateroom actually means is it's just different locations on the ship. So depending upon the stateroom you select and the location, there could be an upcharge for that location. So how do you find out where all of these rooms are located on the ship? Viking does a really nice job on their website. Once you select the dates and the pricing of the particular cruise you wanna to go to, you can see here this cruise itinerary is on the Viking Venus. 
So if you click on the Viking Venus, it will then come up with a great, helpful, interactive deck plan. So you can see, remember, all of the rooms are on decks three through decks eight. So you can see if I select deck three, now if I hover over um, the deluxe veranda, you'll see that those are back here, they highlight red. The DV6 will highlight red here. So this is where you can see where all of the different rooms are located and actually choose which state room you may wanna select. So this is a very helpful tool that Viking has. So that way, once you figure out the state room you have, you can get it in the exact location on the ship, provided it's available. So which room did we choose for our most recent Viking Ocean cruise? We chose the Penthouse Junior Suite for a variety of options, mainly because of the room itself and the size of the room. So for us, when we go on vacations, we do like to spend time and relax in our room. So the room was very important to us. One, so that we could fully unpack, but two, we wanted multiple seating areas and we wanted a larger balcony than some of the other classes. So that's why we ultimately chose the Penthouse Junior Suite stateroom. And that was the perfect room for us. And it will be the room that we book on future Viking Ocean Cruises. Now, let me give you a full walkthrough of that stateroom. So when you first walk into the room, either the left or the right, depending upon the room, you're gonna have your closet along with your coffee maker. You can see you have seven large drawers. One of them has a safe, complete for a uh, full size for a laptop. And then you had plenty of hanging space, which we loved because it did allow us to fully unpack and iron all of our clothes and get them pressed so that way they were ready for the entire trip. Opposite of the closet, you're then gonna have the bathroom. And this is one thing we really liked about the Penthouse Junior Suite is the extra large bathroom. Straight ahead here, this towel rack was actually a heated towel rack. The floors are also heated. And then for those that care about the bathroom products, um, I know they're important to many, you have uh, Freya, your body wash, lotion, conditioner, and shampoo, along with a vanity kit and a shower cap. The bathroom had plenty of storage. We loved the two large drawers on either side of the double sinks and the counter space that really allowed us to unpack and make it home for our trip. And then you even have a large cabinet underneath that really gives you additional storage space. The shower blew away my expectations. It was so large, it was awesome. The pressure was amazing. The room was beautiful. The outlets were really nice beside the bed because there were Euro and American outlets. And the seating area, we loved along with having the makeup desk in front of the bed, which to the right, uh, the right drawer there, the makeup desk is actually your mini fridge and your second TV. And then your seating area was amazing, really allowed us to, to relax, eat breakfast there and look out over the beautiful views if we didn't want to be on our beautiful balcony. If you found this to be helpful, please hit the like button down at the button. It really helps us grow the channel. And if you're looking for more Viking Cruise content, please subscribe to our channel and check out our channel page where we have additional videos.